Yes, thank you, sir. And you're all set. Have a good meeting. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to the May 1st uh, conservation meeting. This is our first hybrid meeting since uh, COVID started. So you have to bear with us a little bit. There's a couple of blurbs to read. This meeting is being held hybrid as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law. We are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town situate in accordance with the open meeting law. Mm. And then, town situate mass commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. The Conservation Commission is committed to providing an environment of respect during our meetings. We ask all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and non-class communities, to feel welcome and respected. We ask our committee members and all who participate to commit to those standards and to support and respect our community. Okay, that said, we have an agenda. Are there any additions or omissions to the agenda? I don't have any. Okay, can I get a motion to accept the agenda? I make a motion we accept the agenda as written. I have a second. You can second even if you're here. No, I want to give her a well stop. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, all in favor, uh, Richard? Yes. And um, Doug's not here, correct? Correct. You made a motion. Is Jen on? Jen is not here. Okay. Andy? Yes. And Frank, yes. Did I miss the meeting? Nope. Okay, so Central Avenue and Hunrock. Yes, so this is a continued hearing for that North Cliff project, and I have like North Cliff team is here. I know Lynn is up, and I need Lynn. Yes, I'm here, and also have Scott Sheehan from Hanscom. Great, good evening. I forget where we left off on this. Well, we left off uh, with the stormwater oh, review. Had, had a few um, few questions, open-ended questions, but where well, um, revised plans came in. Actually, we've got Janet Bernardo from Wars of Witness also on the line. Is she unmuted? Yeah. Do you want me to say Great. something? Yeah, she is now, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, so the applicants, do they want to just I, you say, yeah. yeah. Remember either Lynn or, um, or who else? <clears throat> We've got a few people from Jacobs here as well, it looks like. So why don't you go first? Anybody from um, the Air Force? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, this is Scott Sheehan. Uh, Lynn, are you going to speak to this, or do you have someone, or? Mm -hmm. Oh, she's raising her hand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the unmute. Um, I guess really we worked with um, Amy and um, Janet from HW to work through the different issues and um, we feel that we have resolved all of the issues or items um, or questions that were outlined in HW's um, peer review and um, really we are just here to if there's any questions um, from the um, Conservation Commission that you want further information on, we're here to answer it. And I guess um, just let us know what other, um, what else you want us to cover tonight. Thank you. Now that you've said that, it did jog my memory that we were sort of leaving this with you and 
uh, maybe Janet reviewing some of the details on that. So maybe it's a good time for Janet to just give us a little heads up on where, um, where you got to. Sure. Um, for the record, my name is Janet Bernardo. I'm a professional civil engineer with the Horsley Witten Group, and we were brought on to conduct a peer review of the stormwater management for this project. Um, you have received four review letters, the latest dated April 24th, 2023. Um, we had a, two different work sessions with the applicant, uh, most recently on April 19th. And our April 24th letter um, has found that we are satisfied with the applicant's responses in that letter. There are a couple of recommendations for your consideration um, to can use as special conditions if commission so chooses. I'm going to go for more than that. And if you have the letter open, if you if you wouldn't mind reading, I do. Letter. I do have it open, and I and I scribbled on it a little bit. Um, okay, so. I think the first special condition is that at the moment, the applicant um, is not disturbing more than one acre, um, but they're close. They're trying very hard to stay less than one acre, but the commission may choose to um, require a SWIP be provided to you or to the town if um, changes arise that require land disturbance of more than one acre. So that's just um, a suggestion to, if applicable, provide the town with a copy of their stormwater pollution prevention plan. Uh, and then, then we had a couple of different com comments regarding the operation and maintenance plan. And I think the <coughs> primarily we would recommend that you request, um, you require receipt of a signed O&M plan prior to land disturbance um, that then would cover some of the various items, including um, just some, some modifications, some adding some logs to the operation maintenance so that everything is categorized correctly, um, a signed statement uh, regarding an illicit discharge um, a illicit discharge compliance statement, which basically is for the property owner and to say that they will not be discharging any illicit um, wastewater or, or other into the stormwater system. It's more a, an acknowledgement that they heard they heard you and that they understand that, that that's not acceptable. And there is a, um, they, the applicant revised the turning island area that was designed for like a fire engine. And which I think is great. I think it's a, it's great from a land disturbance and it was a fairly pretty steep cliff that they were proposing and they'd have to bring in quite a bit of fill. And, but I, I do think that you may want to confirm that the fire department is satisfied that that uh, the key the that they have created is adequate for turning around a fire engine. It, it looks like it is, but um, I'm not sure what the size of your fire engine is. Hey, Janet, this is Scott Sheehan. Can I interrupt you for a second? I'm getting text messages that we have some people from our team that are that are that have called in and then also tried to zoom in waiting to be let into the meeting can someone check that probably need to give them names so that they can be seen by the um, administrator you have yeah, everybody's automatically let in is it mary mcconnell was that one scott uh, it was uh renata welch is it the two phone numbers yeah, we have a couple of phone numbers too. Okay. Okay. Well, just press on then. <laughs> Looks like most yeah, of our well, I'm pretty much finished. Just any questions you may have, I'm happy to answer them. Can we get those folks on, do you think? Well, everybody that's called into this number automatically gets in. Uh, 
Uh, okay. I mean. Yeah, it's just one person, so we can we can move forward. I'm texting her now. We we don't need to wait. Okay. Um, Amy, do you want to um, address this? No, I mean we, we've been kicking the project around for for a, you know quite a bit for reviews now for storm water, and um, I mean. Essentially, it's a stabilization project, right? Adding some stormwater controls. But do you think that, as presented, it's something that you could condition? Um, with, of course, the bigger project of the club stabilization um, out there and something that you voiced that you want to see come in as soon as possible? Okay. Um, Richard? Your neck of the woods. Yeah, I read the Hosley, uh, Horsley Witten report, um, and I thought most of the stuff was pretty well answered um, that had been our concerns. I would definitely want to know how uh, the fire chief feels about the T turnaround. I agree, it looks to be a, a great improvement over the amount of disturbance that would be made. I just don't know. I, I'm certain the regular engine that's here probably wouldn't have any trouble with the turnaround, but I'm not sure for any of the larger engines. So that would be one thing I'd want to have cleared up quickly. The rest of it looked pretty good to me. Honestly, it looked very good to me. Um, this is Mary McConnell and I'm the engineer of record for this. And I just want to say about the fire department turnaround that it does meet the NFPA standards and the situate bylaws uh, for the requirements for a hammerhead turnaround. So we meet all the size requirements. Um, they have a standards manual um, mm -hmm. that we use for the design. And then the second aspect of it is there is an acceptable fire department turnaround on the west side. I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, they are able to pull in and reverse back into the gravel and pull out on that side. And it's a much smaller um, footprint. So my, I guess the concerns of um, um the accessibility of the larger truck on the on the east side of the high end are uh, I think we've achieved that design criteria. Helpful, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Um, Penny. No, I'm very happy. You know what they've done for the stormwater, and I just hope that the funding becomes available. Mm, for the rest of it before the rest of the cliff keeps. You know, because let's face it, it is going to keep washing away. It is not going to stabilize itself. And um, it, it just is scary what we saw out there. And we were lucky this winter. We didn't have any major storms, but um, you just ne never know. So, so I hope um, you can get the government or whoever is do doing the funding on board and get this done properly the stabilization of the whole cliff because it'd be a shame to lose it all. Thank you. Okay. Um, nope, I, I appreciate the thorough review and uh, don't have further questions at this point. I have no further questions at this point. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about the project expanding a little bit more. They'll, they'll have less than an acre there if they keep letting it go. Yeah. Um, so at this point, it would probably be good to keep moving. Any, any possible update? I know it's just speculation on when there might be some improvements to the, to the cliff itself. Or well, this is, this is Scott Sheehan. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm just uh, the natural resource manager and been involved in this project eight years, but I, I don't control the purse, you know, of Congress. So yeah. I can tell you that it's it's uh, number two on Hanscom's priority list, which um, we usually get, you know, one or two projects funded a year. Uh, it's number 10 when you go up to our headquarters level. And uh, right now there's a uh, people at the Secretary of the Air Force level have piped in with some legal opinions challenging what our classification is on the type of funding, whether it needs congressional approval or not. So we're working through that. 
So for me to speak as to when Nick could be funded, that this has been going on for the eight years I've been here, but also since the 1940s, I'm hesitant to make any commitments. Sure. I can just give you an update. All right, thank you, Scott. All right, um, did we have anybody in the audience, anybody else interested uh, the stage? Seeing none, Frank. All right. Um, well, I, I, I know that the fire department used this site um, actually for a temporary fire station when our fire station was um, under construction. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess there'll be changes. John should be pretty familiar with the site itself if we want to yeah. send him something, but I think they've got those I's dotted, T's crossed. So um, I take a motion. I'll make a motion to close. Second. Second from Penny. All in favor, Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank? Yes. Great. Well, thanks a lot. I know it's been, we've been slogging through some here, but good luck. Any idea when this project might start? Uh, I, I think it, we were hoping to start it this year. So as soon as the construction season and we can get these design documents out for bid, if, if we can get bids in time and they can start, you know, before the winter exclusion, it might get done this year. If not, we'll have to, you know, kind of put that winter exclusion in and, and hold it to the next year. Sure. Is it open to anybody? Can it be used right now? Yeah. Is, I'm sorry? Is it open to um, servicemen, women? Can they use it at this time? Yeah, it's, it's open year round. Uh, just the, the busy season starts probably, you know, in the next two weeks up to Memorial Day. Uh, Mass Audubon's already out there doing the, the bird protection area. The, um, and then we're having some discussions about even having public access. So uh, for under the public lands law that, you know, or that came out recently. So so it's open year round. Yep. Great. Okay. Well, good luck. Okay. If I can, I ask one question on this. Sure. Uh, so we closed the public hearing. I'm on the, or, or was on the commission in 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 uh, Salem, Massachusetts. What's what's the next step? And is there an opportunity that we would get to, you know, look at and give you our feedback on a draft uh, order of conditions? How, do, how does situate work? So what we have, if the, well, we could get that off to you. And then if you have a comment that's a technicality or something, you can let us know. Um, we try not to have too much back and forth with that, but I guess it's kind of a unique site. So it'd be good to get that out and just see if there's any technicalities that would be something that could be discussed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sixty-one Border Street. Mr. Grady here. Do we have? We also have sixty-three Border Street. Can we combine those, or are they two separate projects? They're two separate projects, <coughs> and we have um, yeah. Paul Seberg from Grady. Looks like he's without. Yep. Hi everyone. Paul Good evening. Great consultant. Hi Paul. So first we're on to 61 Border Street. Right. And I think for both of these, if I'm not mistaken, you you presented the initial presentation now to 63 then. But so I think we can probably discuss them both together, but it's two separate DEP numbers. Or although or maybe Maybe 60, I mean, actually, maybe you should clear it up because it's 61 keeping the original proposal or are they both just going to the shared job? It's like the sharing. Yeah, the, they'll both be going to a shared dock. Okay. Good. Real plan statement. Really? Um. So that's good. Right, and walking, so yep. Would you like me to go ahead and go through the, the, um, the changes here? Yes, please. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, so if you recall, the uh, the original design consisted of one uh, pier that was centrally located in, on number 61 Bloor Street property. Um, the applicants um, met with the uh, butters and the owners of 63. Um, they decided to do a shared dock. Um, the proposed pier design now consists of uh, two access points, uh, one located on 61 Border Street, which is approximately 185 feet long, and the other on number 63 Border Street, which is approximately 90, 90 feet long. Um, they connect together to one single pier, which is three and a half feet wide, that then extends down to the Gulf River to a 12 by 12 foot platform, uh, 24 foot long ramp, and a 10 by 20 foot float. Um, due to the property line location in relation to the existing salt marsh and channels, uh, the re original design with one single pier required crossing the channels on an angle and over a long span. Um, the proposed shared dock design now allows the pier to run parallel with the existing channel that's out there, mm -hmm. um, a shorter channel crossing um, in a more desirable location for both property owners. Um, since the applicants are proposing to to construct a pier for access to the Gulf. Um, the proposed shared dock will greatly reduce the impacts to the resource areas as opposed to two individual docks in this area. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Uh, Amy, do you wanna go first? Sure. So, so where we had kind of stalled out on this one was with Fish and Wildlife had comments on the docks. Um, and then also just the access agreement between the two property owners. I mean, I'm not sure if that should be rolled into the orders or not. Is there something that's floating out there, Paul? Yeah, there's gonna be um, an easement for the for the two uh, access points eventually. Because I've seen projects in town where the access agreement is kind of it's become difficulty during change of ownership. Let's just put it that way. Where maybe, you know, new owners don't want to honor the former agreement. So um, okay. not so sure that should be in our orders, but there should definitely be an access agreement that's legal. For sure. And chapter 91 will be required, obviously. And then just one other comment. I was out at another nearby site, um, a site visit, and did note that it was pretty, pretty kept up on the number 61 property, um, right down to the marsh. And I'm not too sure that that's the way we want it to be. Um, look, it looked like it was pretty manicured right down to the edge of the marsh. You know what I'm there should be just a single path with an okay. access area. Prefer just a single, like three or four foot wide path down to the um, access point. Yeah, they're, they're, the buffer to the salt marsh should be at least 50 feet of undisturbed buffer. Okay. Um. So, uh, Andy, you want to take one? Let's try to get this one. Uh, I do not have any additional questions. Okay. Um, Kenny? No, I think it's great. The two of them doing it together instead of having two separate paths out over the marsh. No, I'm all set. Brendan? I, I have no questions. Richard? much better. I, uh, I'm good with it. Do we have anybody in the audience? We do. Hmm. Oh, I just saw a hand. What happened to it? it? Looks like Jim Spellman's hand was up. Who's? Must have lost the connection or something. Just if, if somebody has a question, you can raise your hand if you want to speak. Oh. Okay, hold on. Okay. Good evening. Jim, can you can you get this? 
No, and can you hear me? We can. Oh, you can hear me now. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, hi, I'm Jim, I'm Jim Spellman. I'm in the butter. I I live at 49 Border Street. Um, the question the question I have is the question I had when the proposal was only the DeFranco policy, uh, proposal. I don't know if you can pull the the uh, the schematic. Yeah, that's it. Can you pull it down there? What I what I'm uncertain about and would like some clarification about is how you're proposing to do this project. Uh, in, in other words, how, how, how are you accessing the property? There are only, it seems to me, four, four ways to do it. The fourth way being uh, by sea, and I don't imagine that's your plan. So I, 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 think, I think clarification's in order here. Uh, the DeFrancos have a significant wall uh, over so, which... so, let, let me let, me let the uh, engineer if you can answer your question Jim yeah, yeah sure please yeah so the um, the applicants plan to access the property basically right down I mean I understand the DeFrancos have a, a wall there but they have adequate access to the side of the wall to walk down and bring materials down um, through the existing path to the start of the dock so that's okay. where they would access it from there, and as well as the property at number sixty-three Border Street. Okay. So, if, Paul, you're saying so. I mean, it's just it's a valid question. I hope you understand. Um, the, uh, the 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 sixty the DePrancos is sixty-one, if I recall right. That's correct. Um, and that pat they do have a path to the left of their wall, so it is possible to go down there. You understand there are. Uh, both their stormwater drainage um, uh, containment and their uh, um, their uh, what do I want to say unorthodox uh, um, septic systems fall in right along that line. That so, you, but you're not going to compromise those by getting down onto the property, right? They'll have to work around those. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, I mean, I'm 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 fine with that. That's that was my that was my concern. You, uh, the conservation commission, probably has noticed that the DeFrancos have pretty much clear cutted what uh, the the lot line between the that upland and the marsh to this point. Um, that, across, Jim, across. Uh, Amy noted that Jim before you jumped on. Um, that we, we think that there's an excessive clearing there and it's a buffer zone that they should be observing. Yeah, I mean, it, okay, I missed that piece then. It is it is true, we're gonna agree there is excessive, clear, excessive clearing yeah. and, and frankly, including some of my property at the low end, they, they just missed the lot line and came and knocked down some trees on my property too. Uh, but uh, as, long as, the, as long as the Conservation Commission understands that that well, it'll probably be addressed in the orders, you know, what is and is not allowed in that buffer zone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is a better plan than the one that was proposed. And so long as they're staying within the confines of, of what, what's being suggested, I'm, I, can't, I can't imagine an objection to it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Anybody else in the audience? Did we address lighting on this? Was there any mention of, of lights? Is there anything in the plan for lighting? As far as um, like uh, electrical lighting on the, on the dock? Or, or lights in general? Um, currently, we're not proposing any, any lighting. Um, I don't know if the applicants are on here at all and can comment on if they plan to do any sort of lighting. So the reason I bring that up is I've noted a couple of docks that we conditioned, and I'm not sure we have it in the orders or not, but you know, I'm sure folks are proud of their, their docks, but one of them looks like it could be a landing place. <laughs> uh, and I don't think that that's the intent with this. Obviously, people want to be safe. You know, if they need a, 
the light at a stair or something like that. But um, I don't think it was, it looks like Mr. DeFranco's on. So um, maybe we can listen to that. But my, my opinion is that I don't think this should be lit up like a Christmas tree or, um, or a landing strip. So if there's something that we can, we can think about in terms of our orders, maybe Mr. DeFranco wants to speak to that. All right, I'm just Mr. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I think we're, we're definitely on the same page. Me and Bill spoke about it a little bit, but I think we're on the same page as you. We don't want to let up like a landing strip either. I mean, we might put some solar lights on it, but few, very, very few, if any. And if Bill, if you have anything to say, you could, you could chime in too, but I don't think we ever had an intent to wire lights out onto the deck. Okay, great. Okay, Ken, maybe, you know, for purposes of getting at the dock at night or something like that, but um, I just could say I noted at least one and maybe two that um, I, I just was surprised that that was how it was handled. And it's, it's a natural area. I think some of the lighting does affect the animals, uh, different things, and it, it's, uh, it doesn't need to be an ornamental kind of thing. So thank you. Um, Amy says still got a chapter 91, public access stairs are in place. Um, I'm really glad that you folks got together on that. So to eliminate an additional boardwalk out onto the marsh at some point is, um, is fantastic. Frank, Frank yes. am, I un am I unmuted? Yes. Um, it's Jim Spellman again. I just want to th I thank you because I meant to mention this myself. The lighting is the lighting is highly problematic to us, and I agree. There's a dock across the way from us that's, uh, that does indeed look like Logan Airport run runway. Um, it's, it's, to the DeFrancos and to the Dalek Andros, uh, our our request and our hope is that we can eliminate lights, you know, per perhaps you know, discrete lights when the thing is in use at nighttime, but it's a, it, it's a huge disturbance to just the serenity of the evening, of the evening sky. And, the, and, and frankly, I believe it probably has some deleterious effect on the marsh and the wetland on the wildlife out there. Um, I, I, I hope we can be either agree that we won't light the project or that it'll be extremely discreet. I think we can, you know, we have the ability to add things into the orders to that effect. That, that, would, um, that would be huge from my perspective. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay. Anybody else? Can I take a motion on this one? Take a motion to close. Don't we, need two, don't we need two motions on this, Frank? One for 61 yeah, and one for 63. Okay, so we were discussing both. Of, do we want to, did Mr. Delacondro want to speak to that then? Was he on? Did I see his name at one point? I was. I don't see a hand raised. Okay. Okay, so I make a motion to close 61 Border Street. A second that. Second from Brendan, all in favor. Richard? Yes. Andy? Yes. Frank, yes. Okay, I make a motion to close 63 Border Street. I'll second that. And then again, all in favor, Richard? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Number one, Hollis Street. This is an amendment. No, this is a continuation. All right. Of, oh no, actually, did we? We opened it and continued it. Yeah, we opened. Okay, we opened and continued right. at the last meeting, which was just a week ago. Yep. And Darren Grady looks like he's on the hybrid. Uh, good evening. Um, oh, do you, would you would you like me to present this? Yes. All right. So um, this is a modification to a previous site plan. 
Um, the, site, the previous site plan was a, a house uh, without a pool, uh, with a deck on the uh, wetland side and a restoration area uh, down the lower left. The uh, my client uh, Lane Cole is also on here is that, is um, looking to increase the size of the house, add a pool and also a pool house on the back of the garage. And uh, what we've done is we've connected all the roof leaders into the existing drain system. And uh, it will, the capacity of the drainage system will accommodate uh, that roof area. Um, the pool area is partially outside the 100 foot buffer zone at approximately 75 feet from the wetland resource area. Um, the driveway is also proposed to go into this drainage area. And uh, as it was uh, in the original um, modification, uh, one of the uh, substantial improvements in this is that we're raising the house ele elevation. So the basement slab is elevation 12.1. The existing floodplain adjacent to it is elevation 11. Uh, so um, this will um, help get her out of uh, the floodplain. Uh, the uh, proposed house right now is uh, is 49.5 feet to the uh, deck. Uh, that portion of the deck is overhanging uh, here. So we're still actually outside the 50 with the footings on it. Um, and the restoration area has not changed. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thanks, Darren. Frank, I asked Deb Keller um, to review the stormwater for this project originally on behalf of the commission to if she was available for the call. She is. Um, so I've got Deb on if you have any questions related to stormwater. Um, well, if she's on, why don't we get her um, Okay. Just a quick Here feed, she is. feedback. Hi, Deb. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Deb Good Keller day. with Merrill Engineers. Good evening, Deb. So um, as, as stated, uh, I went back and looked at the uh, originally approved plan versus um, the modifications that are being proposed. And we had a, a couple of comments, um, more for clarification to make sure that uh, when the work is done, it's done correctly. Um, looking just looking into some of the spot grading to ensure that the uh, as proposed the driveway and the roof leaders can <clears throat> make it into the subsurface chamber system. Um, really, I think that was uh, all a clarification on uh, you know the uh, pool house or pool shed that was behind the garage, uh, confirming that that that's what that structure was. And um, just checking inverts. So I, I believe that uh, Darren's uh, addressed my comments from a stormwater perspective. Hmm. Thank you. Amy, do you want to add anything to this one? Um, well, not, not really. I mean, I think that that was one of our you know, big questions was whether the increase in impervious with the extra development um, that be heavily handled by the proposed stormwater. Um, I mean, it is a more intense project, clearly, but it does um, appear to meet the requirements of the bylaw, and they are adding some enhancement plantings. So um, I think that that's a positive, positive thing for a of the development. There were comments that were circulated from an abutter. Hopefully you saw those. Mm -hmm. um, neighbor. I, we did see them, yep. Would you like me to uh, answer any of the questions? Yeah, if you would. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they have copies of the letter. Hold on one sec, I gotta grab them. Um, so, uh, where is the pool house on the plan? It, that one's in, in, it's in the back of the garage, as stated. Um, 
the mentions an encroachment along a majority of the shared property line um, with no buffer plantings or screening is of concern. Uh, your pool is both on our on my client's property. Uh, I think it's 16 and a half feet to the property line. Uh, there is no requirement for screening in this area. Uh, when proposed changes to the site, the house footprint, the house footprint, and the pool uh, are on there, and the square footage is shown. Uh, we analyzed it for the drainage and we had it peer reviewed uh, by Merrill engineers and uh, they agreed with our, um, our design. Uh, so there's a discrepancy regarding square footage changes to the site. Uh, the pool looks, uh, they don't specify what those discrepancies are in the first sentence. The pool looks to be 80, 90% in the 100 foot uh, wetland buffer zone. I, uh, I agree with that. Looks to have an impervious footprint at 1,260 square feet. Um, 18 by 30. Uh, I have not double checked that square footage, but I believe it's uh, that, that could be approximately right. Um, the walkway at the back of the closed garage and additional 4370. Um, we have looked at the additional square footage and we've added it to. Um, the block coverage on the plan and in our grain scouts. Uh, and we, we've had this peer reviewed. Uh, pool drainage, has this been addressed or approached? Uh, a lot of the pools have a non backwash system. Um, this would be um, you know, the type of system that would be used on this pool. Temporary stockpile materials that are shown on the plan. What types of materials will be stockpiled and what detailed containment procedures will be utilized to keep them in place? Uh, any stockpiles on here will be temporary. Uh, we've located an area that uh, would be in here and uh, if, if and when necessary, we would uh, put siltation stock around them. A notation, move boulders and reuse along the front stone wall. I believe this is pointing to a stone wall that is located inside the driveway. And it was um, on my client's property and it was necessary to remove, uh, to uh, relocate some of those boulders to accommodate the driveway design and getting into the, uh, into the drainage system. Uh, pool equipment. Is located further down into the hundred foot wetland. It would be better up by the proposed residence. Uh, the pool equipment can go as shown on the plan. Uh, again, we had mentioned that it's not going to be a back flush, flush type of system. And uh, we agree with the location on the plan. Uh, Overall, we have concerns with the construction of the pool and pool house with additional light, noise, and chemicals that adversely affect the sense of the wetland area. Uh, I disagree with this. Uh, there's been plenty of pools uh, uh, proposed in situate, and this pool is 75, 75 feet from the wetlands. I've not heard any um, negative impacts about light, especially from like the pool. And we're not proposing any lights in the pool right now. Um, and I think that's about it. I'll answer any questions if you have if you have that. Okay. Um, Richard, or Amy, do you have anything else you want to add to that? Um, no, well, Deb actually had responded some quick comments to those comments as well. And I think that, that we're, we're good as far as responding. Okay. Do we have those? There was another you... email this afternoon that- Yeah, I got them. Out. I can go over them quickly if need be, sure. or if not, no worries. No, that would be, that would be helpful. Yeah, I'll be right there. I'm sorry, Amy, did you say yes? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. So uh, quickly, I- uh, same thing 
Pool shed is behind the garage. That's what it was indicated to me. Uh, clarification um, was the plan that uh, Merrill previously reviewed dated 9-11-2020, uh, had the setback to the uh, garage uh, side setback at 15.7. Um, it's now with the slight increase in the structure, it is now going to 15.2. So it's just a six inch uh, increase or reduction in setback. Um, I think the next one I would defer to the commission as this is all work that um, can be approved within the 50 to 100 um, under your regulations. Um, in regards to the increased impervious, so um, Grady in their submittal letter dated March 27th, 2023, uh, had a table breakdown, which we followed and compared with the stormwater uh, calculations, which showed including the pool patio um, shed and house increase was a total of uh, 1,972 square feet of an increase, which uh, we, as I stated, we reviewed the stormwater system to make sure that that could accommodate that increase um, and still attenuate um, the stormwater flow. Uh, one of the questions was with regards to pool drainage. Um, I think Darren uh, addressed it with the type of pool that's being done. Um, also, there was a question about the grading uh, along the pool, between the pool and the property line. There are spot shots shown on the plan that show that that area would be graded to the northeast and around the pool in, um, in a northerly direction. So that would not be an area that's blocked. Uh, from a grading standpoint. Uh, I would, um, and I don't know if this is maybe something you would defer to, but with regards to the pool construction, I would believe the pool company uh, would be evaluating the pool with regard to groundwater, if any, impacts. Um, and I and I, I do think the note uh, with regards to the stone wall, I went back and looked at the previous plan, it is indicating a stone wall that ran north to south, um, bisecting sort of at the back end of the pool um, in existing conditions. And it looks like that has been um, already removed um, on the site. So that 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 I think is uh, the note that looks like it's 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 floating um, possibly. Uh, and I, I, I think that's pretty much it, pretty straightforward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Richard? I don't have any additional questions now. Uh, Penny? No, I'm all set with this one. Looks good. Uh, Brendan? Yeah, I, I was... Um, I guess I wanted to ask. It's it's showing here that so you're 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 uh, encircling the entire property with a chain link fence along the wetland and into the fifty. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Um, that was on the previous plan as well. And including through does that chain link fence go through the restoration area? Uh, no, it does not. Um, it seems to have plan though. Hold on, let me double check. I was trying to read the screen. Uh, so it does go on, it does go between the wetland, uh, between the restoration area and the wetland. Is it? I see. Isn't the restoration area part of the wetland? Uh, is the restoration area moved. part? So you're putting it through the wetland? Uh, no. Uh, so the restoration area is an enhancement of the uh, buffer zone. Uh, so we're, we're planting it as an enhancement to, to the buffer zone and not creating a new wetland. What's that, Brendan? We were restoring. I thought there was stuff removed that was part of the wetland that needed to be restored. That's the restoration area. I think so, yes. So therefore, the restoration area is part of the wetland with your chain link. Well, 
It's part. It's protecting. It's the buffer for the resource. I, I guess I didn't notice it on the other plan, but. I think it's a good point. This whole fence is this whole fence is but right. I'm not cool with it. But, uh, that's not really a professional way of saying it. Well, it's right up against the weather. It's not and it's how true. how tall is this proposed fence? Um it'd be four foot. Four foot. Oh, so the deer can jump it. But can does it have any can animals get underneath it for animals that don't jump? Uh as far as uh it, it has no holes in it as far as for wildlife. Okay. Um, I I disagree with that, particularly through the restoration area, which is the restoration of what? Um, so that's that's one of my points. <laughs> okay, we can we can make an accommodation for you as far as to put a hole. Or uh, a couple holes in the uh, uh, yeah. fence around. I um, personally wouldn't want to see it anywhere in the 50. Um, let's see. Uh, um, Elaine, are you on the, this call? Do you, uh, is, yeah. do you have any comments um, as far as that? Uh, this is a previously approved uh, fence. I just want to make sure she's okay with the, any modifications uh, yeah, that we so do. I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, first of all, obviously, yeah, we did request this fence because we have dogs, and we just yeah. it's really important that our dogs can't get out onto the road. Um, that was the main priority. Um, the other thing is that we, when we did this um, restoration area, we brought in um the botanist. Um, can you remind me, uh, Darren, who the botanist was? Uh, it was John Zimmer. Okay, so John Zimmer, we specifically asked him about the fence and the impact that it would have on wildlife wetland area, given that it's in that location. And he confirmed it would have no impact whatsoever. And that letter did go into conservation and was approved the first time round. So I'm kind of not really sure why it's being brought up again when it was already approved in the first plan that was submitted with part of the order of conditions and has already been filed. This isn't new. This has already been approved. I guess I missed it. Uh, I'm happy to forward on that letter from, from, from him to you, just so that you can see his comments, because he is the botanist. He's the one that is the expert in this area. Okay. Um, what I mean, that's, a, that's a really good point, and I didn't realize that there was a fence condition in the last one to this. I guess it was an oversight. Um, we're having that same discussion about another piece of property where a fence was installed without permission, and we're looking to have it removed or pulled out of the 50 or, or somewhere in between. Um, I actually have the letter here. Do you want me to read it to you? No, that's okay. I think we're well, the thing is it's it's obviously this is something that's very important to me because I, you know I, I, we have our dogs and, and it's a busy road there so you know we we just obviously want to make sure that we can keep our dogs safe and that was the main reason and I paid specifically to have the botanist look into this and put together a letter that was sent to conservation um, explaining what we were doing and it went to you on the 22nd of July 2020 and and you know obviously was approved then so I'm kind of just you know it's a little bit upsetting to hear that you're actually bringing it up now when it's already been approved well Elaine you know we approved an entirely different project so we're still looking at a fairly major change to the site um, so I think it's within the realm of the commission to take a look at that Okay, but this, it's not, your, your former project was a lot simpler and smaller. And there's quite a bit more in this project. And I, I think it's a good point um, to be putting a, a fence right along the wetlands line. Um, it is a concern. And there may be some discussion that we should have about that. I would like to add a little maybe it doesn't mean very much, that I am sympathetic to the dog issue I live on Clap Road. 
and have a dog. So I am sympathetic to that, but. Um, so so he, just, just so that I can read to you, he said the proposed perimeter fence will be installed in a manner that does not inversely affect- Can, can you speak, Elaine, can you speak up a little bit? Um, it, Thank so, you. The proposed perimeter fence will be installed in a manner that does not adversely affect wildlife movement through the property. The majority of wildlife species using the property currently would be able to move around, over, or through the fencing once it is installed. Additionally, a four to six inch space between the ground surface and the bottom of the fence will be maintained to ensure that small terrestrial wildlife will be able to pass under the fence. The location of the fence within the buffer zone will not adversely affect the ability of the resource area to function to protect the interests of either the Wetland Protection Act or the SWR. Additionally, the fence will provide a physical barrier against any future encroachment, encroachment into the wetland. Should the commission be amenable, conservation markers can be placed on the fence posts at 50 foot intervals to identify the presence of a sensitive, sensitive resource area. In summary, the proposed perimeter fence complies with the performance standards for work within the 100 foot buffer zone to BVW under both the Wetland Protection, Protection Act and the SWR. Given the wetland issues inherited from the prior owners, the Coles recognize the sensitivity associated with the wetland and buffer zone and are seeking to conduct the additional improvements within the property in a manner that maintains the current function and value of the BVW. So we are, we're, we're obviously putting in that whole, you know, um, restoration area um, it, it, to, to, to enhance that, that space too. Do I, am I, I was looking through the plan to see if there was a detail on the fence that showed those notations, but I don't see that. I'm sorry, what are you looking for? I was looking on your plan for a detail that um, showed the specifications or the, the detail that um, was described in the letter, but uh, am I missing that? Is there any detail for that fence on the plan there? There is not. I can, I can add it if you if you would like. Frank? He went to sleep. Are you there? He went to sleep? Frank yeah. went to sleep? He's I taking so. a nap? Nap time. We lose him. I can see him. Is his mouth moving? Where'd you go, Frank? I can see you, Penny. Yeah, I can see you, Richard. I can see Andy. <laughs> hey, Seth, are you listening? I think we lost the feed at Town Hall. Oh, oh. Uh, I did not know this. Let me look uh, into that. Give me one like moment here. Help us. Thank you. <laughs> I, I hate to uh, interrupt, but I do have to step away for another meeting. Um, but I think we've, we have discussed the stormwater. Hopefully... Um, you won't need me further or? I don't think so. Thank, okay, thank you. all right. Thanks, thank, thank, thank you very much. They are joining again, if you just want to stand by here for a second. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm trying to keep the dogs out of the marsh. I don't want them chasing the... I agree. Let them stay in the yard. Well, what I was going to say to Frank, if, if they can just put the notations in the four to six inches that takes care of the ground animals and yeah. add the conservation posts. Um, yeah. and it looks like your town hall should be back. Mr. Snow, you hear me okay? We can. Good. Can you hear us? Yes. Yep. Well, we couldn't, but we can now. So there was a, all the lights went out here and oh, good. something happened. And when we did that, we lost the connection. Well, that's okay, Frank. We took care of it. We're all set. 
Ha <laughs> ha. I think it was still Brendan's turn. Yeah, that's that um, well there's a lot going on here, but the thing that's that's on top of my list is the, the fence in the 50 and particularly through the restoration area is seems to me like that's a no-go. So uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Penny, we're gonna go one at a time here. So okay. you, you had your opportunity. I'm gonna go yep. through the I just just to clarify, I feel like the fence to the restoration area is a fence through a well. No, I think it makes sense. So, Andy, yeah. So helpful to, to know that the detail on the fence, right? Because I was worried about that too, and not recalling the, the prior <clears> details. <throat> the fact that it allows wildlife to pass is good. But also, I just want to confirm that the restoration wasn't wasn't um was done because there was clearing that was not supposed to happen right that that wasn't done right as a that's district. how it originally came to us andy correct okay. so I, I guess uh and uh, the fence itself is fine i mean i will i guess just for for public statement uh i mean the north and south river wa watershed has a very public campaign to limit pet waste in areas like this so so having dogs fenced in next to a marsh relieving themselves does that does have a negative impact I, I don't know that that's something we can address here but my thought is with the additional development in the hundred if the owner would be if, if the, the applicant would be uh amenable to it i'd love to see a little more restoration or a little more buffer along the marsh you know at, for, for further development with the pool and to address some of this concern if we can just pull back some of that area um, and restore it that that would be my preference but that would be my one comment Thank you. Who am I not? Yeah. Me. Yeah, Rich. Because we Rich, have sorry. No, that's all right. Um, what Andy said, first of all, really good. I like what he said, and I agree with him. Uh, second of all, regarding the fence itself, if the stip if the details could be put on the plan, the four to six inches above the ground and the uh, conservation posts could be put in uh, i i would feel much better about that i understand brendan's point completely but i think it's kind of a double-edged sword and in view of the um a meeting of the current rules as they are not maybe not preferences but rules i think it's hard to overturn the fence in general at least with those particular stipulations so i like them added to the plan i just have a question on uh the conservation posts um, I have the detail on uh, sheet two and I have the locations in the rest restoration area. Are you looking for something that's outside the restoration area or am I missing something? Uh, no, you're not missing anything from me because I wasn't specific and I don't know what would be best. I bet Frank would have a better idea or Andy actually might have a better idea. Okay. Um, And we lost you again. Did we lose Town Hall again? I think we got everybody. So there you are. It, it, yeah. it, Rich, are you saying like, like if I can jump in, Frank? Just right now, it's in the restoration. If we could add posts across, you know, across the property, is that what you're suggesting? No, and the restoration's fine as long as you think that's true. I, you'd be actually better at that than I am, where I'm not nearly in that area as often. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we could extend some further planting to increase the buffer and then add, add posts to make sure folks stay out of it going forward, that would be great. Yep, I'm good. And, um, a couple of questions. Do, is there anybody in the audience? Do we have anybody else? We do. Yes, <clears throat> We're at number 11 Hall that we directly left this property. So your name and, and address? Of Darlene and John Bradley Jr. Okay. 11 Hollett Street. Thank you. So, so they, this is the couple that sent the letter. Right. We're the ones with the letter as part of the, if you look at that plan, we're the property line that's closest to Jennifer right now, where about 80% of that lot line is affected between the pool, the septic, and the house. It's a huge, pretty close encroachment to where the house is 15 feet and everything else, as far as the I don't know what, would you want me to rehash the letter or? No, actually you missed it because we, we, 
point by point okay. through the entire letter. Okay. okay. Um, so I apologize if we weren't here for that. Sure. But I, I feel free, you're at the meeting, feel free to make your. Um, right, well, that's why, I, why one of the main reasons for coming in case anyone had any questions that way, you know, how I either came up with it or like, the, again, there's a lot going on on the site as I think I've been hearing. Um, and again, there's no real buffers. I think it's only a six foot chain link fence that's going to go around the, the property on the, you know, sort of non marsh side. Um, and I think the pool house was finally identified, and what's not on the plan is the little jut that comes out from the back of the garage. I uh, got that from the letter. I apologize for adding that in without. Um, but just a lot going on on the uphill side and on the site itself. And then, of course, my concern about maybe being a water table. Looking at the plan, the <clears throat> pool is 80% in the 100 foot wetland buffer zone. And we feel that that's a really adverse use of this property for a very sensitive wetland area, given additional light, chemicals, noise that would be impacting this sensitive area. And we've lived here for 22 years and know how much wildlife is there. And I'm not just talking wildlife that you see, we're talking fish, you know, underground wildlife, anything that's connected to the wetland area. I'm uh, just kind of re-looking at the plan. Sure, if I have in front of me here. Um, I, I think what's important for us is not so much how this project impacts your property, but how it impacts the environment. Um, and it is a pretty substantial change with the pool. We've had a stormwater review which essentially covers extra runoff right. from this project. So they've had to design in a bunch of infiltrators and things to deal with impervious surfaces. And there's additional impervious surfaces now that the pool is coming in. I believe, is that, or am I missing something on the plan itself? The pool, I don't see any drainage structure connecting to the front chamber that's in the front. So we have a, our engineer that reviewed this project. Deb, are you still on? I don't think she is. No, okay. she had to leave, Frank. Okay. So do we know if the pool area was calculated into the impervious areas? It was. It was. Okay. Yep. Okay. Darren's still on, correct? The, That's the, correct. The, okay. the applicant's engineer. So the pool area was, the, cap, the surface of the pool area was included in the calculations for the impervious surfaces. That's correct. Okay. So there'll be piping around the pool to deal with the drainage that comes off of it, where it's pretty close to the because of a pool by nature is sloped away from the inside of the pool, it's a little sloped away, it kind of runs off on the sides. Is there any accommodation for that? Or is it... can you hear this, Darren? I can. Um, okay. so um, I believe we do meet the performance standards for um, having that pool within the buffer zone. We're 75 feet from uh, the buffer zone with the corner of the pool. I think we're 66 feet from the corner of the concrete um, there. And I think we do comply with the bylaw. So that the stormwater bylaw doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a drain installed everywhere. It means that you know, the areas of the house, the drainage from the roof, different spots. There was, there's already an impervious area there, mm -hmm. the existing home with no stormwater. Right. So now the upgrade and the changes in these impervious areas, the applicant has to take into consideration all those areas. So it looks to me like these are, are connecting roof drains driveway issues, things like that. So they may not encompass every single aspect of this, but they're going to pick up all of the area that they're altering as part of that. So along with their design person, the Conservation Commission hired a consultant to review that, and I think they hired a good one, um, who did a thorough review of, of that storm. It doesn't say that it works 100% all the time, but it's the best we can do to assure that that um, those issues are, are 
I dealt with. Um, I obviously can see your concerns. You know, it's a much bigger property. It's moved. So, so we have a little bit of a conflict because we want them further away from the marsh. Um, so everything that gets developed gets further from there to stay out of the buffer zone where they can, because that pushes them closer um, to the property line on the other side. Right, but that pool is still 80% within the buffer zone. It, it is. And, and, and that's what I think is okay. adverse. Yeah. But so we have basically a 50 foot no build, mm -hmm. and then we allow construction in the 100 foot with, with mitigation measures. So, and that said, it, it draws me back to, well, there's two things. So can you tell me what the surface is of the driveway in the proposed project? Oh, uh, yes, it, it's pavement. And then right pavement. now, right now it's not pavement, is that correct? No, that's correct. So, I mean, I, I'm not enthusiastic about that. Um, it is out of the out of the fifty, but it's it's in the hundred. And then and then this fence, and, and I guess we didn't pick up on this the last time, but I, I would be looking at this along with Brendan that I'm just wondering if that really needs to be right up against the, the edge of the marsh. Um, that there can't be an area. Um, maybe that fence doesn't have to be 50 feet away from it, but I'm not sure that it needs to be right on. A lot of yard there. So if I may just speak up here, I mean, obviously, you know, that that area at the bottom is, is, our, is our yard. And, you know, we, we really, don't want to have a fence running right through the middle of our yard. Um, you know, so we're happy to add a little extra restoration along there to help. I mean, the biggest thing for us is, you know, we obviously there's, you know, we're, we're conforming to whatever the requirements were per the botanist letter. And, um, you know, we just we just want to keep our dogs safe. And, you know, from, from coyotes coming into the yard as well, for that matter, you know. I, I get why you want to fence in, and there is those concerns of, of other animals, um, like the coyotes or giving the dogs their space. But I guess when, when we look at this sort of thing, we're looking to create some sort of buffer and that the whole area doesn't need to be developed. When you start to put a fence up there and, and have a yet, yeah, obviously that grass area was, it's, it's been there a long time, it was there back when that house was built, maybe it got expanded over time, but we're not saying that there isn't a lawn there already, but now that you're making these other changes and you want to add a fence, I guess my concern would be that maybe that fence doesn't need to be right on that wetlands line, that you can have um, possibly less of a manicured yard on the other side of it. You may not want it to grow up, but if that were allowed to have more growth that would actually be beneficial to the environment as opposed to have a mowed lawn right up to the fence. Well, you know, so we're happy to add, um, continue that as I think, I don't know who it was, I think it might've been Andy. I, I'm having a really hard time hearing you, I'm sorry. I, I think that Andy proposed that, you know, we add a little bit more restoration uh, along that area. I, I mean, obviously, if, if that allows me to get my fence, I mean, obviously I'm happy to do that. Does any, anybody else on the commission want to comment? Restoration. Sure. Um, like mitigation. Well, actually, I did have a, my second kind of question that I as hyper focused on the fence was, you know, there's all this work happening in the hundred. 
Yeah. Uh, is there any mitigation that's being done besides the restoration? Uh, just the restoration and the um, stormwater. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. What, what sort of, uh, we have this small restoration area. What other mitigation is offered on this right now, Terry? Um, so it's the restoration area and the stormwater that um, we proposed. Well, the stormwater is the stormwater is for the project to be enlarged. So that's not really mitigation. I mean, it, it does deal with stormwater, but it's dealing with the expansion of the house. So what are what is the mitigation on this site right now? Uh, so the previously approved plan only had the uh, restoration area that was shown. And we did not increase it for this application or this modification. You know how much fills being added to this site? I uh, I don't know off the top of my head. No, uh, there would be. Uh, we are adding about a uh, a foot, a foot and a half underneath the house uh, to raise it above um, elevation uh, eleven. So the front yards be regraded as well to slope up to that foundation. Yeah, so they uh, up near the driveway that that is uh, being increased as far as the fill. It's actually going to help the stormwater get to this um, drainage system. Before it's flat, it would go slow. This will get it there a little bit faster and back into that full bay. In the previous project here, where we approved. It started as a restoration of. Was there something else? I don't remember. I, I'm sorry. Maybe. No, well, the, the previous project was a raised rebuild. Okay. But the it project was. originally right. came into us as an enforcement for cutting along the buffer. Okay. And then. And then it included a raised rebuild. And then the property sold and it became a, a raised rebuild. Yeah. This raised rebuild. It's not this raised rebuild, but another raised rebuild. And the, the, the amendment is for enlarging the house and adding a pool. So, okay. Can we get a, do we, we don't have the plan of what was actually conditioned? Well, I think that's the one that's right next to this one. Isn't that the condition? The one that was yes. next to it is, is an existing block. Oh, that's the good. septic system? Right. Would you like the plan? So the one next to it here is that's that's the existing house that's there now. So you are correct. That's the existing conditions to the left. So we don't we don't have in front of us what was conditioned. No, I don't think I have it. Well, maybe I have access to it. Maybe to Um. Well, I think I'll just try to look for okay. it. So I can share it. Okay, if I share my screen, is it the one from September 11th? It's 2020, 2020, September 11th. Is that what that says? Revision to 9-11. Okay. 20. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So the one that's up on the screen now is what was approved under the order. Yeah. Apollo's chain link fence. Okay. And we approved it. We did. I seem to remember having some of the same questions. Would it have the four to six inch? I remember that now. Underneath. Right, so the new proposal just has a larger house, a pool, and the, everything that goes along with the pool in a larger infiltration. So previously there was no other additional mitigation besides historic what was removed, the enforcement part. Right. I guess I really can't read it from here. No, there was no other special. Well, the shed was to be removed from the 50 foot buffer. Shed, shed was to go. And, yep. and other than that, it was just two seasons of the enhancement plants for special conditions and the stormwater improvements. The shed's been removed. But as you say, this gives you a, a fresh, fresh look at the site, so you don't have to stick to moving on the same right. special conditions. You can add to it. I mean, if I may just say, I mean, like you can see the sideline. But Elaine, yeah? just you just it's really hard to hear, so we we'll turn you up. Go ahead. Um, I'm just saying, if I may. Um, you can see um, that the original house design, it was 15.7 feet away from the sideline setback, which of course we know is all conforming anyway. And so we are literally five inches different from the original sideline setback. There was still a temporary stockpile. Everything is the, exactly the same other than we, we have just added the pool and the pool house and the, all the stormwater drainage calculations that, that we paid for a whole set of engineering to ensure that they all fl flowed into the right place, which is the stormwater drainage system, which we revised because we, we I mean, we're, we're twenty thousand dollars into into engineering right now, just just to so that you know, because we're trying to make sure that we we do everything right. So you know, the original stormwater drainage was proposed to be in the what was the original gravel driveway and, and that was rejected so so then we had a whole new design redrawn up which is what we currently have and, and what was actually approved so you know when we did the pool i i wanted to make sure that we weren't going to have to change the stormwater drainage because that would have been a huge change and the good news i thought was that you know when we found out it, it didn't need any change whatsoever the stormwater drainage system totally accommodated the modification that we were doing and in addition to that we further enhanced it by actually again having a revised drawing done so that we raised the the house by the the foot or whatever it was that was needed to take the home out of the floodplain which actually then sloped all the water even more efficiently into the stormwater drainage so you know i feel like we've modified and modified and modified to try and make this the best possible situation so that nothing is flowing in the wrong direction. Um, Derek, can you just enlighten on that? So the, the, <clears throat> the elevation of this house in the approved project is a lower elevation. So this house is raised, is that right? Yeah, so the previous uh, submittal had the cellar floor elevation 10. Uh, yeah. The current submittal has it at uh, elevation 12.1. Uh, the floodplain's at elevation 11. Um, so 
my fear is that the house may have been brought into the flood hazard, even though it's on the other side of the line, just because of the elevation of the uh, of the cellar. Um, that is no longer uh, an issue. So in, in, in elevating the house, because I'm, I'm trying to look at the contour lines on the, the project that was approved and looking at the contour lines on the proposed, they have their different contour lines between the house and the weapons. Am I right? Um, actually, they're very similar. What used to happen is they had to step up uh, to uh, get out of the house. Uh, mm -hmm. Now that's no longer needed. So there's not more fill being placed between the house and the wetlands? Um, not outside the house, just under the house. So the yard, the grading in the yard isn't changing. Right. So we had um, some flood storage uh, compensation that we went over for the previous um, uh, submittal that was approved and that has remained exactly the same for this um, for this scenario. Anybody else? Any other information on this? No. I think you, I mean, you have uh, what you need to close. Mm -hmm. You can condition, um, you know, certain things if you want to move the fence or if you want to increase the enhancement area, you could require that in a special condition. Okay. Special condition will also include a um, full condition, which is standard for orders. Yeah. Okay. Or you could continue and look for um, revised plans to. I'm more than happy to have the letter that I had um, from the botanist. I, I mean, Amy, you have a copy of that. It was sent to you on July 22nd, um, and it was specifically relating to the fence. I mean, I, I'm happy. I, I mean, I'd appreciate it if, um, you know, that could be shared as well, because, it, it, you know, he, he was a person that we very specifically engaged to ensure that the fence was not going to be impactful in any way, shape or form to the, to the habitat or the wetland area. So I just want to emphasize that, you know, we did do our due diligence on that and we engaged the person that knows the most out of everything because he was a botanist and he's the one that's doing the proposed the restoration area for us as well. The information regarding the fence that you've asked is um, something that could easily be conditioned like and add that to the plan um, and um, have that on the plan for the uh, approval. I can get that done now. Um, at the end of this week, beginning of next week. So, what we close this hearing, um, you could certainly, we already actually have the letter, but we can add the letter again. So, once the hearing is closed, then a set of orders are, are written, and then the commission votes those orders at a future meeting. Yeah. So if everybody feels like they've brought up all their issues, um, then we can close this and, and then we'll take up a discussion over whether we think anything else needs to be <coughs> modified or, or whatever. And then if the applicant disagrees, they can certainly appeal that. Frank, I'd make a motion to close, but I want those conditions put in about the uh, the, the stipulations of the, the fence be on the plan, um, the letter adhered to, um, whatever Andy said exactly about the conservation posts and the offer to enhance uh, further the uh, remediation. Well, we can, we can put in what we'd like to see for additional right. mitigation. And yep. you can 
yep. can add that. And I guess the only other thought that I would have is, and I'm not sure how this fence, I think Brenda was saying how it got so close to this wetlands line, but I think it's a consideration as to whether that should be at that proximity or it should be pulled back some, and then maybe some of the mitigation should be between the fence and the wetlands. If, um, if an area was allowed to, to um, go back in some fashion with look for people to do some sort of, not, not necessarily leave it clear, but it could remain a higher grass area or a little bit more environmentally friendly than, than a manicured lawn right up to the wetlands line. Yeah. Can I just share with you, because I think that this, this letter makes it very clear. It said the fence would be installed by hand along the limit of the existing maintained lawn and would not encroach into the wetland. The Coles are also proposing a minimum of a three foot buffer from the wetland boundary extending into the existing lawn that would be vegetated with native species selected for high wildlife value. So we have taken that into consideration. And I'm sorry that you you know you don't have that letter in front of you, but this was discussed in detail at the last meeting that we had, and it was approved and and recorded. And I'm just you know I'm just just wondering why we're going back discussing it when in fact it has already been discussed. This letter was 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 reviewed and everything on it was approved. And, and it's going to be very impactful to our our land and our, our in quiet enjoyment of our property if you are you know suggesting that we move the fence in beyond that but we're already saying we're going to put it three feet that that's a good portion in that gives a, a, a very big buffer do you understand the purview of this commission Pardon? is is to we're trying to protect the wetlands and the runoff that goes into the wetlands and and to enhance that. That's why we have a buffer. Your house is has already been altered because it was done before that. And then whoever had the house made changes to it that were in violation. And so the commission is looking to protect those areas and, and, and enhance that. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, that's why we are $20,000 in for engineering. <clears throat> well, you're in $20,000 because you expanded the house and we have a stormwater bylaw. The, the, the expansion of that house triggered that stormwater bylaw. Well, actually, what, what happened was we, we had to move the stormwater drainage because the peer review didn't want it in a, in a particular location. So we did move it. So, you know, we've, I feel like we've tried to ensure that we're taking good care of the wetland area to the point that, you know, we've conformed with all the requirements. I mean, the original plan that was approved that you essentially, the only changes are seven in five inches from the sideline set setback, 400 square feet of living space, which is one room size, and, and then the pool. I mean, that, that they're the only changes and, the, and adding the pool didn't impact the stormwater drainage calculations at all. So, you know, it, it's actually minimal changes. And Darren, please share if, if, if you... If you... Um, yeah, the, we, we presented those and um, um, put them on the record. Okay. Um, I, I think we have all the information and we've, we've discussed it all. I think we're good. Um, Can I make a motion? Yes. I make a motion to close. Can I have a second? Second. From Richard, all in favor? Um, Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. I'm leaving. Okay, 31 Roses Lane. This is they continued. Withdrawn. No, they withdrawn, Frank. They did. They withdrew. Okay. They withdrew the application. It was too close to the wetland and they knew it, so they moved it, and now it's not in our purview. Okay. 153 Gamut Road. 
septic. I just unmuted Paul Dunn. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I got a big well, I just have to open this. On uh, on May 1st, 2023, 6 p.m., the Central Conservation Commission will hold a weapons hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code Bylaws, regarding the application of Rockland Trust Company for work related to septic system repair. At location 153 Gannett Road, situate. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting is available posted on, on the agenda. Tom Buckley. Okay. Who do we have? Uh, Paul from the Morris Engineering. Hey, Paul. Hi there. All right, so uh, just for and Paul, design engineer at Morse, representing the applicant for the notice of intent at 153 Gannett. Uh, so this site currently contains a three bedroom single family dwelling with, a, with an associated driveway, patio, and landscaped areas, with the rest of the lot being a mixture of woodland and lawn areas. Mm -hmm. The house is currently being served by a septic that's in a state of failure. Uh, the resource areas on site include a bordering vegetated wetland and a FEMA zone AE, the BVW having been delineated by John Zimmer in February of 2023. We're proposing to abandon the existing septic and replace it with a new concrete septic tank, pump chamber, and enviro septic presby leaching field. All of the proposed system components are located outside of the 50 foot buffer and are within previously disturbed lawn areas. Uh, we're not proposing any tree removal or the removal of any mature vegetation. And we have an erosion control barrier downslope of the proposed work to prevent any erosion or sedimentation into the wetlands. Post-construction, all of the disturbed areas are to be stabilized with loam and seed. Um, yeah, so as you can see, there's quite a bit of resource area around this site. Um, and for purposes of raised rebuild, I'm not sure what the future of this site holds, but um, I would say that we're not accepting the, the resource areas, um, but obviously a septic system is for a failed system where definitely be in support of a new, new compliance system. Um, would be best if it could be kept outside the 100, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of options here for them to be done. So I guess that's why it's uh, within the buffer that it is. DEP had no comment. Okay. Um, Brendan? Yeah, just a uh, <coughs> secure existing concrete pad to be removed is necessary. Uh, is it going back? Uh, I believe so. So what's there currently, I, I believe is a concrete pad. Um, I believe it actually has a, a cannon on it at the moment. Um, we're unsure if during construction, it's essentially, it's not uh, the septic system isn't under there, but part of the overdig required for the septic is. Um, it may be required that if, uh, if they can't just dig around it, that it has to be essentially removed. Um, it is currently proposed to be, you know, um, repaired if necessary. But okay. okay, yeah, that was my just yeah, yeah we were, we were kind of yeah we had to kind of pick either you know the septic in the fifty or you know alter the concrete pad so we chose we chose the pad. That sounds like a good choice. Thank you. Um, Amy. Uh. Any? No, all good. Richard? I'm good. Anybody in the audience? Say none. So this site, Amy, we had a couple of violations out there. I understand someone passed away this is a state thing, but right, we were out at the site a couple of times for filling and alteration. I don't know if you were, maybe it was Pat or- Yeah, it wasn't me. So, no, it was a long time ago, Frank. 
Well, it wasn't that long ago, but wow. we had a request. There was a, someone doing some work there and wanted us to look at this. And I think this prior owner did a lot of um, altering to the site. And I'm just, uh, normally we don't look for for markers or anything in a septic like this, but I'm just wondering if there's some way we can keep people, this is gonna get sold to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good time to place wetlands markers on that 50 foot. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I had written that down actually um, as a possibility. So I think that's a great idea, Frank. And or even I'm not even sure we want to accept the wetland as it's shown oh, well, in the island. You know what I mean? So I was going to start there by saying any future project, uh, you know, you get to take another look at the. Um, For sure, no, I agree. With, I agree with you. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things going on in that area. It's a marshy area. It's certainly up for discussion, but we have to pick a spot to put these things. And, and if we put these markers along that um, assumed line to start with the base of the grading at the septic system and then carry that over to, that should actually be like old Gannett Road where the driveway goes on to this Gannett Road to the back of the property. Right, Paul? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Was so, it house? No. what's that? Is it, this house has been vacant for a while. I no, it, it, the fellow yeah. just passed away recently, but he has a lot of eclectic things there. Okay, that's what the building commissioner was saying. Yeah. Um. It's so interesting sight. Yeah. But um. I, I would, I would encourage wetlands markers to run right along that hole from between both streets. They should just be a series of wetlands markers. And and this would be a good one for as soon as the septic's done for certificate of compliance. Because mm -hmm. you're right, it's it's going to be sold. You got that, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, will you require revised plan showing the markers and, uh, and where, you know, in between the the line and the 50, are you are you thinking they should go? On the 50. On the 50? Yeah. How, what's the frequency? Like at 50 feet apart? That sounds good. So it looks like four or five markers. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can provide the, uh, provide a revised plan showing that. Okay. All right. Make a um, motion. Oh, anybody a butter? Oh so, yeah. Do we do we have any butters for this? Thanks. See now. Okay. I make a motion to close. Second. Second from Brendan. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Frank yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, we're at 14 Cap F. Motion to continue. So I got to open it. On uh, May 1st, at uh, 6 p.m., the Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing in the Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws. and. Section 30700, Town Central Code of Bylaws, the, the, the application of Stephen and Marianne Henderson for work related to an addition of location 14 10th Ave situate. About as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting is available posted on the uh, website. And they've requested a continuance to 515. So Make a motion to continue 14 10th Ave to May 15th. I'll second it. Second from Richard. Yep. All in favor, Andy? Yes. 
Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Great. Okay, we have a very patient <laughs> gentleman in, in the audience. Um, when the meeting starts at six, it comes at six. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, oh, man. Think of all the great things you just kind of I've been in more than one of these. Uh, so on May 1st, 2023, during the 6 p.m. meeting, the Central Conservation Commission will act on the request of Peter Murley uh, for a determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wildlife Protection Act and Central Wildlife Bylaws for activity related to replacing existing paved driveway with a gravel driveway for single family dwelling. Location 142 Oceanside Drive, situated by the Southern Interest Surprise, provided to attend. Information to access the meeting is available on the town website. Do you, uh, do you have anything you want to add to this? Well, we've been, we're in the middle of a renovation, and the driveway itself, as you can see, with the, with the um, dumpster and all the work that's been done, it became evident that it's misshapen, the pavers are cracked, and we need to do something about it. Um, I have a gravel driveway at my other house, and I actually like a gravel driveway. And, you know, we are sensitive for the house 30 years, and we are sensitive to our location. And I think pulling the pavers up and uh, you know, increasing the permeability there with the street runoff certainly helps us and, and, and everybody. Um, also, inside the fence, and, it appears, based on the plot plan, that it's actually right outside the 100 foot buffer zone. And with the new maps, it's actually in an AE uh, flood, which is a nice improvement for us. Um, and then inside the fence is also a small paved area. The driveway itself is about 665 square feet. And then inside uh, is a little courtyard area that currently has a paver. It's in the yellow, kind of a key shaped paver walkway uh, that needs repair and replace. So we've got, you want to repair or repair, replace the one that's in yellow, and then you want to remove the area that's in red and replace that with the ground. There you go. Amy? Um, yeah, so it appears to meet the requirements of a negative finding. So, Penny? Nope, looks good to me. Uh, Andy? I'm good. Brendan? I'm good. Richard? I'm good. Anybody in the audience? Seeing none. Okay, I will take a motion. Make a motion for a negative three. And a second? I'll second that. Brendan, all in favor? Richard? Yep. Andy? Yep. Thank you. Yes. Negative's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sorry, I had to. Uh, I should have jumped you to the start of this thing. No, so no, sorry. To... I recently retired. I have all the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do, you like, do you like to quit trails? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm actually um, one of the things I have always supported are the trustees and the reservation. So I'm a volunteer there. To... Well, so Howard Matthews is one of the folks that does a lot with the trustees yeah. and, and he's our trails manager. So if you want to do some situate trails. I could. Okay. I could, I could. Keep us in mind. Other than World's End. Yeah, keep us in mind. Yeah. Happy to do uh, who, who is it? Um, How oh, Matthews. Is, uh, yeah. But uh, we, you can reach him through the office or something like that. So, yeah. Great. So, great. So, great. So, great. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you all. Thank you. Next day. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, Agent's report. Well, all right, so I have this to report that there's a lot of people out there doing the wrong thing. How about that? Really? It's like, it's incredible. Yeah. Incredibly bad. I went out with Craig last week, Thursday, to a hot and heavy enforcement site that's attached to the Toll Brothers in um, orders. So I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a legal dilemma in that, I mean, it was, it's a single family home that was sold off from the bigger toll development. Right. It still technically has orders on that property. So enforcement's going to go to both 
um, the new owner and Toll Brothers, and, and Toll wrote that they were very explicit with the homeowner in the buffer that was preserved. So um, a little bit of surprise that they would take a uh, bobcat and just take it all down. But didn't we already have an issue with that site? I don't know if it's, it's the owner. Yeah. yeah, that they cut some trees. And there might have been a tree oh. that we thought was related possibly to a view, but um, yeah, no, there's a, a huge patio that was built, and um, and now also the buffer has been um, destroyed. So, unbelievable. No, it seemed like when uh, all of a sudden the weather got a little bit better and the moon changed to something that. Every way you turned, there was. Yeah, well, and so of, of letters that we've sent out, which have been more than five in the last 10 days, that we've heard back from one. Hmm. So far. Um, Although the, the new person doesn't have correspondence yet because we get training on Friday. But anyways, um, the fun just doesn't stop. I'm really glad that we held this hybrid meeting, though. Um, this worked well. Yeah. Richard, I thought we were going to see you in situ. Uh, the next one you will. I uh, had a little scheduling issue with my wife. So you got me, but not there. <laughs> OK. Well, I was a little nerved up about it, but now it seems like the technology is really yeah. Amazing. Like, is it good on your end? The only complaint I have is it sounds like you're all in an echo chamber, whereas when it's all, you know, when we're all home, it's very up close and personal. Well, so then maybe in the end of the day, we won't like this format, but it's hard to say with, with only two here, because imagining like five yep. here would be a, big, a different feel, yep. you know? But are these... Um... Are these microphones wired into this, or so we're only being picked up by the TV? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Why we sound like we're echoing? I don't know, yeah, but when you when you guys systems? yeah when you guys blacked out for a couple of minutes, uh, Andy and I were talking, and Penny and I were talking. It was like they were right here, but right. from you, and at least that's what I'm getting. I don't know if Andy's hearing the same thing, or yeah, he is. So yeah, I, I hear it fine enough. It's not the same, but I'm yeah, I hear it, but it's a little harder, and it's yes, yeah, agreed. Yeah. I don't know if it was just Mrs. Cole has a really soft voice, but I struggled to yeah. hear. It was like she was too far from the microphone. Yeah. On her end, yeah. On her end. Yeah. Um, I wonder that's if that's a common um, issue using this, like other meetings, if they're hearing the same sort of thing. Um, well, it's just you sound like you're a little bit of an echo chamber, but other right. than that, I think it's fine. Yeah. You sound like you're in an amphitheater. Well, Dad, <laughs> I'm in an amphitheater. She doesn't even need a microphone. Not, Come on. You might not be able to see see us. Like, I mean, you really have to know who's talking, right? I can see you now. But it doesn't show no, the voices. Like, I mean, Where you know I? what I mean? Like, you know, well, both Frank and Brendan have blue shirts on. So it's like, in my view here, Frank and Look the same, yeah, yeah, no, that was fine. If you set it to speaker view when you guys talk, then I can then I can see the room better. When it's oh, that's speaker, true. That's like now. View though, right? No, but on this end, you can you can choose for yourself if you want to see. Okay. Yeah. But it was good overall. Yeah. And, well, it's good. It's know, good. I hope we continue to do it. See what we can do. But. Yeah. I hope we do more of them because I would come. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and I think for the bigger projects, if we can get the engineer and their attorneys here, it's, it's a nice thing to be able to look them in the eye. And... Yeah, agreed. Um, I'm going. Good night. All right. All right, so we have another meeting that could wrap up at 8. Yeah, I got a... South Shore, Pier, uh, South Shore Pile Driver gave us some end of some cut off piers to use at uh, Damon and um, some of, and uh, Appleton. 
to protect the picnic tables. Oh, good. And uh, we're, we're looking into whether we can expand the parking area at Bates Lane. Yeah, superb. If we have enough money available, we've kind of come up with a preliminary plan. So when you pull into that parking area, you would turn to the left and it'd be additional parking because that's getting used a lot and people are actually driving off the parking and into the woods a little bit more. So um, let's see if we can make that parking area bigger if the, if the numbers work. Good. I think that's about, about it. Awesome. Are, there, are there more documents to sign? Do I need to get over there this week? Yes. yes. Okay. I actually made it all the way over there the other day, Richard. I just didn't have time to check in. Yep. Oh, did Amy leave? No, there she is. Right. Oh, okay. Way over here. <laughs> no, I can see you. For a second, we just got your name and you left. That's all. Um, certificate of compliance for 123 Country Way. That's good. Um, yes. And Anything else? Any minutes you want to um, okay, Penny, or we? No. No? Not today. Okay. All right. It's been nice. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Penny? Penny left. Oh. <laughs> Penny left? And now, we can't, now we can't vote. I am. Can't vote <laughs> <adjourn. laughs> well, no, we got four of us. <laughs> Andy? Yes. Uh, Frankie is. Good. Good to see All you. All right. Everybody.